study was conducted to determine the factor that reduces blood pressure the most, medication, diet, or exercise. 15 patients at a hospital with comparable levels of high blood pressure are randomly assigned to each treatment group. After eight weeks, the drop in systolic blood pressure for each patient was measured. Use the data below and a 5% significance level to construct an ANOVA table to test the claim that all three of the treatments produce the same drop in blood pressure. Okay, so they're telling us to use an ANOVA table, right? to test the claim that all three of the treatments produce the same drop in blood pressure. All right, first thing you want to do is check the data and see if it's from a completely randomized design experiment. The description of the problem certainly sounded like that because it looked like they took 15 patients and randomly assigned them to each treatment group. So that's clearly indicating completely randomized design. But another quick check is that there's no other categorization here. There's no row labels here to label these individual people into different categories. So in other words, this number 11 is part of the medication category. There's no other way to label it here. It's not like it was also listed under, I don't know, you know, Caucasians or something. If it had a label here that said Caucasian, you'd say, well, these are 11 Caucasians who also went under, underwent the medication route for treatment. You know, in that case, then we'd have a two-way table and we might be dealing with randomized block design or some other ANOVA pr procedure. But for our problem, we have no other cross categorization. So we're just gonna assume it's completely randomized design. And of course, that fits the description of the problem itself. All right, now from there, let's start with our first step then, which is to, to uh, express the uh, claim symbolically and then to do HO and HA. Okay, so our claim in this problem is going to be that we want to test the claim all three of the treatments produce the same drop in blood pressure. So the claim is that all three procedures are equal. Okay, so what we mean by that is that they all produce the same drop in blood pressure. So from there, we can express HO and HA accordingly. HO is going to be that the three methods all have the same mean drop in blood pressure, right? So the, the methods that we had in this problem were basically listed here. It says medication, diet, or exercise. So medication, diet, or exercise. So MDE, medication, diet, exercise. HA is that, of course, at least one differs from the others significantly. At least one differs significantly. So in other words, at least one of these treatments stands out from the rest. Okay, now from there, our next step is to fill in the ANOVA table. In order to fill in the ANOVA table, we need to work with the data, so we're going to have our data step at this point. And the table we want to fill in, of course, looks like the following. So I'm going to go ahead and create the table, and then we'll go do the work that's required to fill it in. So for our ANOVA table, you know, we always have a, a column called, called source. We have a column called degrees of freedom. Then we have a column called sum of square, a column called mean square, and a column for the test statistic at the end, F. The sources are basically going to be the treatments. Then we have error. And finally, the total. Okay, so we're going to fill those in. And remember, we do not need to fill in these three positions here. They do not need to be filled in. All right, so let's take a moment now and go work with the data to come up with the values that we need to fill in for these first two columns. Once we have those values filled in, we'll work the rest right here in the table itself. All right, so let's go do the data step then now. Okay, so now let's work with the data to fill in our ANOVA table first thing we have to do is come up with the correction factor. If you recall, the correction factor is the summation of all the values you have in your data. So that would be the summation of all the y values, then you square that number, and then you divide by the number of values you have total. So the way you would get this value is very simple. You could add up these column totals that I've put there for us already. So let's do that quickly. It will be 56 plus 24 plus 41. If we do that, we get 121. We'll square that and divide by the number of values we had total. We have 
five values in each column, so we have 15 total values. So it would be 121 squared divided by 15. 121 squared divided by 15 gives you the answer 976.066667, right? Rounding off eventually. All right, I'm going to store that in my calculator so I have it for later use. All right, now at that point, we're going to work our next part of the problem, which is to come up with the sum of squares total, or in other words, the total sum of squares. Sum of squares total requires that we take every value we have and square it. Then after we square it, we add them up. So that gives us the full sum of squared value, and then we subtract off the correction factor. Okay, so let's do that together. I've actually done this work for us already because squaring each value separately, you know, 121, 164, so on and so forth, adding them all up takes some time. So I've gone ahead and taken the time out on my own to do it for us. When you do this part of the problem, we end up with the value 1161 or 1161. Then if you subtract off your correction factor of 976.06 repeating, you'll end up with a result here of 184.933, so on. So 93 repeating. Okay, so that's your sum of square total. Now once you have the sum of squares for total, you have to come up with the sum of square for the treatment values, right? Now the way we do that is we fill in the following fractions. We have to have the first treatment total squared divided by its sample size plus the second treatment total squared divided by its sample size plus the last treatment total there squared divided by its sample size. And when you're done, you subtract off the correction factor. So in our case, that's going to work out to be 56 squared over, there are five values in each column, right? So 56 squared over 5 plus 24 squared over 5 plus 41 squared over 5 minus the correction factor. And when you finish all of that, let's see what we get. Okay, so we have 56 squared divided by 5 plus 24 squared divided by 5 plus 41 squared divided by 5. Then minus your correction factor. Correction factor I stored in my calculator is x, so the answer works out to be 102.53 repeating. So 102.53 repeating. Okay. Now that we have the sum of squares for treatment and we have sum of square for total, we can get sum of square for error by using that subtraction idea. So recall that the sum of square for total is comprised of two parts. It's comprised of the differences among the treatments and then error, everything else that we don't know. So if we take away the treatments from the total, we should be left up with the error term or the amount of variation that's due to the error. Okay, so what we're going to have here in this case, because we already calculated these numbers, is 184.933 repeating, right? So sum of squares total minus the sum of squares for treatment, which we just found out was 102.53 repeating, right? And when we do all that, we get the final answer. So let's see what we have here. If we have 184.933333, minus the answer we just found from before, we end up with the result 82.4 exactly, 82.4. Okay, so now we have our important values for the next step of the problem. Let me just highlight them so we can see them when we go back later. We're going to have the sum of square for error, the sum of square for treatment that we need in our ANOVA table, we need the sum of square for total. So those are the three important values that we just calculated so we can put them in our ANOVA table. All right, let's go do that now then. Okay, yeah, let's fill in our table now. So we know that the degrees of freedom for treatment is linked to um, the number of treatments minus one. Well, if you remember, we had one, two, three treatments, so treatments minus one is gonna give us two here. For the total, we have to have the number of values minus one. Well, if you remember, our total sample size was 15. We had 15 total data values. We take away one, we get 14. For the error, we just do the subtraction here. 14 take away 2 gives you 12, right? Okay, now from there, we're going to have the sum of squares, which we calculated already. The sum of squares for treatment was 102.53. That's, of course, 53 repeating. The error, the sum of squares for error was 82.4. And finally, 
the sum of squares for total was 184.93 repeating. To get the mean squares, remember what we have to do there is simply divide the degrees of freedom into the sum of squares. So we're going to do 102.53 repeating divided by 2. So that's going to be 102.53333 divided by 2. That'll give us the answer of 51.26 repeating. So 51.26 repeating. All right, then we're going to do the same for the error term. We're going to divide the 82.4 by 12 to get the mean square for error, the MSE value. That's 82.4 divided by 12. Okay, so we'll do 82.4 divided by 12. And you get the answer 6.86 repeating. 6.86 repeating. So 6.86 repeating. All right, now in order to get our F test statistic, which is our next step, our step four, remember it's going to be MST divided by MSE. Okay, so let's divide the mean square error into the mean square for treatment to produce our F value. That's mean square error into the mean square treatment to get our F value. Okay. So we're going to have 51.26 repeating divided by 6.86 repeating. And when we're done, we get the answer 7.466. 7.466. Okay, so that's our F test stat. Our next step is to compare that F test stat to our critical value. Okay, so let's look at our critical value. We'll draw the curve. Remember the F curve kind of looks like a right-tailed skewed distribution, right? Let's draw a critical, or sorry, a rejection region here. by drawing a right tail on it, and we're going to try to figure out what critical value will separate the rejection region from the do not reject region. So first thing we need to know is what was the alpha for the problem. Well, if we look back at the problem itself, we'll see that the alpha was 5%. There was a 5% significance level in this problem. So let's start with that. We're going to go to the 0.05 table. So the 0.05 table. Then we're going to look up the numerator degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom. Now our test statistic, the numerator was the MST, and it used degrees of freedom 2. Remember, MST has degrees of freedom 2 in this problem. And then from there, we had the denominator being MSE, so its degrees of freedom was 12. So we're going to look up 2 and 12 for our degrees of freedom on the F.05 table to find our critical value. Let's go do that now. Okay, so we're looking at the 0.05 F table. Area in the tail is 0.05. And then we need to find the numerator degrees of freedom 2, denominator degrees of freedom 12. When we do that, we get the answer 3.89. Okay, so our critical value turned out to be 3.8853. 3.8853. Let's compare that against our F test statistic. Our F test stat was 7.466. This F test stat lands clearly in the rejection region. So we're going to reject HO and support HA. And of course, basically our claim was HO which is the idea that all of them are equal, all the treatment means are equal. So in this case, we're going to say the sample data, the sample data allows rejection of the claim. That all treatment means, that all three treatment means are the same. Okay, so that's basically the end of the problem. So at this point we're saying that we do not believe that all the means are the same, so that means at least one of them differs significantly. But we're going to have to do a multiple comparison procedure in the next section to figure out which means are actually different from one another.